and welcome to our Bridge YouTube channel. We trust that this message will motivate you, encourage you and inspire you. Let's enjoy the service together. It is great to see every single one of you here. It is fantastic to be meeting together. And there really is something special when God's girls get together and we get to, to interlink our lives with each other. We get to sit under God's presence. We get to see and do and feel and um, be in His presence together. It is on, on another level. It's not the same when you're with a whole bunch of guys. It's awesome, but it's not the same, right? There is something incredible about She. And if you are here for the very first time, She is our women's ministry. And we, we are literally exist. We are here for you and we exist to bring multitudes of women into an intimate relationship with Christ, instilling a purpose and a passion for God, people, and life. So not unlike our vision for um, main church, we do the same thing, but we do that specifically for women. And it's awesome to see us all together. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to get into the word. Are we ready? Fantastic. Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence that we felt this evening. We pray that tonight you will touch every single woman in a very special and unique way. Father, I pray that only your word will be spoken, that your power, your strength, and the mightiness of your word will, will be out there, that people will receive it, that we will have open hearts and open minds. And let us get a fresh revelation of who you are tonight. Let us leave different because we have met with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Well, like every year, we have a theme that we've been working on, and this year's theme was start. If you didn't manage to see our intro and launch into the theme for this year, go along to YouTube. It is still there. Get onto that um, session. You'll see and get a bit of a background about the theme of start. But I'm going to continue with that today, and I'm just am so excited about the word start. You know, it's, it always <laughs> blows my mind. God gives you one word. What am I supposed to do with one word for the entire year? And yet every single session, every single time we meet, every time I ask him what it is he wants to speak to us about, he downloads and gives us something incredible. And so I'm, I'm super, super amped about this message today. But um, I just wanted to recap a little bit for those who maybe have not heard the introduction to start. But basically, we have a de definition for start. The word, the word itself means begin, initiate, commence, embark, enter, kick off, or launch. It's almost, it's, it's almost like that first part of the start. It's not quite the doing of the start. It's the initial beginning part. It's that, it's that before you actually start. It's that, that thought, the sort of before you actually get to doing it and having the start initiated. But it is still an action word, right? And we need to use that action word every single day. And in Psalm 85, verse 6, it says, Revive us again, O God. I know you will. Such confidence. I know you will. Give us a fresh start. Then all your people will taste your joy and your gladness. You know, God's mercies are new and fresh every single day. It doesn't matter what we did yesterday. We get to start again today. It doesn't matter what we did today. We get to start again tomorrow. And so that word start really is an encouraging word. It helps us to understand what we can start fresh. Maybe it's something we need to start new. Maybe it's something we need to start again. And last time we went through the premise of three concepts. Firstly, stop, then listen, and then start. Stop. In other words, maybe there's stuff we actually need to stop doing before we can start doing something else. Maybe there's something that we need to stop in our, in our tracks so that we can actually listen long enough to hear what God has to say. Maybe there's things that we need to change in our life and stop doing those things so that we can be open to what God has for us. Then we need to listen. We need to be still long enough and quiet enough for God to actually speak and for us to hear. So often we're like, and as, as us women can be, we've got tons to say. We've always got things to ask for, always got things going on in our head. There's this spaghetti going on in our brain and we let God have it and we know and then he just tells you, we just tell him everything. But we never stop enough for him to actually tell us and for us to actually listen. And then we get to start. That's when the actual action starts happening. The hmm before the start and then the start. And so it's a whole process that we went through. And so we're going to continue with that. And so if you're like me, listening and thinking of what God wants me to do and then actually hearing starting to do something, I often doubt myself. I'll start asking the questions like, really, what is it that you want me to start? Where 
do I actually start? What is it that you've got me to start? Is it a starting something new? Is it a starting something again? And who am, who am I actually? Who am I to be doing something for you? Is there anything specific that you want me to start? And what is it? And why me? Am I, am I even, why am I even on this planet? Why am I being asked to start something? Do, can I even do that? Am I equipped to do it? Do I feel ready to do it? And all these doubts and all these questions start coming into my mind. Things like, um, like Moses. It makes me think of Moses all the time because Moses came up with a string of excuses as to why he couldn't start to do what God had asked him to do. And I'm the same. I think, I th- I think well, I can't. I'm not, I'm not strong enough. I'm not confident enough. I'm, there's things I don't know how to do. I mean, who am I really? Why am I even on this planet? Am I, am I here for a purpose? Am I a mistake? Is this, even, is this even what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this even, you know, am I even in the right place? Where am I? <laughs> Where do I start? Okay, I do have some clarity in all of this. I don't have a completely mushed, man, mushed brain with all these millions of questions. But these are things we ask ourselves, right? We'll be, we'll be thinking about starting go, well, it sounds all fine and well, but where do we actually get started? And so we look at the impossible instead of the possible. We start looking at what we don't have instead of what we do have. We start looking at at ourselves in our humanity rather than seeing ourselves the way that God actually sees us. And so we ask the question, who am I and what am I actually going to be doing? Where do I actually start? And so the title for tonight is, Where Do I Start? And we're going to look at a whole lot of series throughout the year, one question at a time. (laughs) And so today is, where do I start? And the answer, the simple answer, the straightaway answer, we're going to get right into the answer. The answer starts with us. Point number one, it starts with us. You know, it starts with our thinking. It starts with how we see ourselves. It starts with us understanding that we actually do have value. It starts with us realizing that God loves us. It starts with us thinking that we're actually not a mistake. We have a plan. We have a purpose. God has designed us perfectly and intimately. And we're not a mistake. And there's a very definite reason that we're here. How do I know that? How do I know that we need to start with us? Because God started with us. God started with us. You know, if you think about what he created, he started with creating the heavens and the earth, the land, the sea, the, the animals, the birds of the air, the, every single type of fish in the water, everything that you can possibly imagine. He designed every little detail on this planet with you and I in mind. He, he, he created the entire earth just for us to be in, us, the us, you and me, to be onto this planet. Every single ounce of creation he created so that we could have it, so that we could be inhabiting this earth. He planned us, and so he created us, and he started with us in mind. So he chose us and planned for us in creation. In Ephesians 1 verse 11 to 12 in the message, I love the way the message Bible says this. It says, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us. He designed on us in glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is, he is working out in everything and everyone. Which means we didn't just happen. We didn't just appear. He planned for us to be here. He planned for the entire creation to happen so that we could be placed in there and we could live in this planet. He gave us everything we need. He gave us the start. He gave us himself. And he is actually all we need. So we need to start with our thinking. Who do we actually see ourselves as? Do we see ourselves as something that just appeared out of a a pond of an amoeba mushy... Is that how we were created? Or were we actually created by an intelligent being that performed us uh, or formed us perfectly in every single possible way? We weren't an accident. We weren't a mistake. We weren't, we weren't formed out of nothing. We were formed out of a, a very clear, designed plan of action, and then it was actioned. God made us perfectly. If you think of just the word us, The word us is actually quite huge all in itself. Do we actually know who us is? Do we know who you and I are? We are actually the children of God. We're actually royalty. We are the princesses of the almighty God. God who created the heavens and the earth 
created every single one of us sitting in this place. Every single person has been designed specifically, beautifully formed, perfectly formed in every possible way. There is nothing about every single one of us that is not exactly the way God planned us to be. We are his children. In 1 John 3 verse 1, it says, what marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. We really are children of God. We belong to Him. We are loved by Him. We're looked after by Him. We cannot be in a better position than being created by Him. And that we read about in Matthew 6 verse 31. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in Psalm 139 verse 14. We have in Jeremiah 29, it says we are designed with a purpose. We've got a purpose. And a plan. Every single morning, there's something for us to do. There is a reason that we're on this planet. Why? Because God said so. Because He designed it that way. Because He perfectly formed us. He planned us. He thought about us way back when. Before He even started the earth, He knew that we were going to exist. And He started with us first. Why? Because He wanted to have a relationship with us. That is the entire purpose of us even being on this planet. The only reason that we even exist is so that we can have an intimate relationship with God. It's the, it's the entire reason that we're even here. That is huge, that we can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the God that created the heavens and the earth, the king of all kings, the guy who designed everything, every little intimate detail, the stuff that we see in nature that we admire and go, wow, that's incredible. That God is the God who formed us, who created us, who made us. That alone is immaculate detail. That alone is powerful. That alone is exciting. You know, if we just think of our bodies, our bodies are incredible. You know, they're actually quite strong. We're not nearly as fragile as we think we are. You know, we're born to think that we actually need to be in bubble wrap when we go outside. You know, wrap us up in bubble wrap. Don't touch me because I'm fragile. And as soon as you do touch me or if anything comes our way that we didn't expect, we fall apart. We're not that fragile. We're actually designed and formed and created in God's image. In God's image. That alone is exciting. In Genesis 1 verse 27, it tells us so. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That means we have been created perfectly. It means there is nothing that is imperfect about how we've been created. You know, if we think, if we think about technology and how it can cut through our eye, the retina of our eye, and that we can still see. I mean, how weird is that? It actually gets cut. There's like blood and stuff. There's, there's things that happen, and yet we can still see. That eye can actually be fixed once it's been cut. You can actually see better after that. Think about um, the fact that we've actually created a machine that can peel off the skin of a grape and then put it back together and stitch it up. That kind of detail. Now, if we can create a machine like that, which already is amazing, God's given us the brains to do that. Well, not us, us but some, some really clever, some really clever scientists out there has gone and created that. Now, if a human being creates a machine like that, can you imagine the detail and the perfection and the immaculate detail that God has created you and I? It's on, an, it's on another level. It's mind-blowing. If we think of, of surgery, we can have a car accident or if we need to have our appendix taken out or whatever the case is, you go in for surgery, they literally cut you up. Like, like there's there's scars and cuts and blood and insides are out and outsides in and wisdom teeth out and things put in. And yet they stitch you up and the body does the rest. Your body actually self-heals. It can actually put itself back together again. Yes, there's doctors and yes, there's meds. We thank you, Jesus, for medication. But we can actually survive that. We can actually not bleed to death. We can actually be fixed and be put back together. And once that happens, the rest is up to our body. Our body actually closes that, that cut. It actually seals the cut. It's, it's perfect. that we can function normally. How amazing is that? That design was designed by God. That design is who we are, every single one of us. Only God can pull off something like that. Only God could pull off something so profoundly complex, so profoundly intricate and detailed, and yet so beautiful and be loved so much by him. You know, when you hurt your knee and you've got your bruised knee and you've got, and you've got scars, 
they just heal itself. There's, we've, we've got a health a, 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 a homing device which just heals itself without even thinking about it. I mean, if you think of your son, I'm not going to say daughter, I don't know how many daughters, two, not as many daughters have as many scars as my son. And he has, must have hit himself, fallen, blood, scars more times than you can possibly imagine. Yet he's all intact. He's actually fine. He's completely intact. And he's going to grow hair over those scars anyway, so that's fine. (laughs) But the body is incredible. It knows where something's wrong. It tells you when something's wrong. When we get a headache, it's because there's something wrong. It it warns us, it tells us we need to drink more water or we need to do something about this. We need to go and get a checkup. There's things that we can do because it warns us, it tells us. The The body Just the physical body, never mind the rest of the makeup that God has created, our spirit and our soul. Just the physical body is amazing. Think of the body of a woman. Now, I hope there's no more guys left in this auditorium because this is when it gets really hot. (laughs) Just think. (laughs) As all the blushing men get all red. Just Just think of the woman's body. Boobies boobies can you imagine life without boobies okay other than once you've had kids afterwards it'd be fantastic get rid of them we don't need them anymore (laughs) but just think about the function of breasts alone just that alone the fact that when we have a baby we can actually feed that child we don't need anything else we don't actually need to go to a store We can function, the baby can live, and we can provide everything that child needs naturally because of the way that God has designed us. You know, it made me remember when when, when you have a baby and you are holding your baby, breastfeeding or whatever the case is, and you stare at this child and they are absolutely perfect. I mean, the little fingers and the tiny little nose and these little little feeties. It's the feeties. I love the feeties. And they are so perfect. And you look at that skin and it's perfectly formed. There's not a scar. There's not a blemish. There's nothing there. And you have a look at the eyes and they are perfect with tiny little eyelashes. And every element of this baby is functioning perfectly. Everything about that child is perfect and unique and valuable and precious. And then they become teenagers. (laughs) And you walk into his room and you walk straight back out again. (laughs) And then you've got all the emotional turmoil of of a teenage girl. And everything is a disaster because nothing is good enough and nothing is going the way that it's supposed to be. And life is terrible. From one moment to the next, it just doesn't get better. And it's one emotion after the next emotion. But you know what? What makes us think that that's any less special? That's as precious and as valuable and as unique and as valuable as it was when the baby was a baby. And then we grow up to be adults. And it's, it's like we don't even think we're valuable anymore. What's the difference between the value or the preciousness of thinking that a baby is completely perfect and has value and is perfectly formed and is precious than an adult? Why does our opinion of ourselves and everybody around us change just because we've grown up and we're adults? Yes, we come with all our issues and yes, we've done stuff and and there's life behind us and there's history and there's baggage and all of that. But that doesn't make us any less valuable. That doesn't make us any less perfectly formed the way that God wanted us to be. That doesn't make us any less valuable to him. He loves us the exact same way. We are still a child of God, no matter what age we are, no matter what season of life we're in. God knew what he was doing when he designed us. He knew what he was doing. He started with us, which means we can start with us. Let's think about us in a different way. Let's know that we are valuable. Let's know that we're loved by the King of all kings. Let's know that we have a purpose and a plan. Let's know that there is nothing on this earth, on this planet, that's ever going to separate the love that God has for us. How can we possibly think that that's a mistake? How can we possibly think that we just happened? God made us perfect. He made us with a plan, and he has a plan with us, and that's 
how we start because it all starts with us. You know, I believe that we're living in a time such as this, an era, a season right now where God has got an amazing plan. There is something happening. There's something brewing. It's a generation where things are happening that we can't even see. We can't even fathom it. This whole COVID season is bringing about something new. It is bringing about a new season. It's that whole concept of starting something new. Trev talks about it. He speaks about Isaiah 43 verse 20 where it says, I will provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. You know, if you think about the rivers through dry wasteland and you think about dryness, that's desperate. When you, when you dry, it's, you, despa- you desperately need water. If you give a dry wasteland ice cream, it doesn't help. If you give it finances, it's, that's not what it needs. A dry wasteland needs water, only water. One little drop of water can make an amazing difference to this dry wasteland. And so often we think we don't have what we need. Yet God's given us everything we need. He's given us Him. All we need is Him. We are the dry wasteland. He brings rivers of water through the dry wasteland so that we can have everything that we need. We are equipped to do the start. We are equipped to do whatever it is He's called us to do. We don't need expensive cars. We don't need expensive houses. We don't need to have finances going out of our ears. All we actually need is God, and God provides the best. It starts with us, and it starts with God's provision. He promises rivers. He promises abundance. He promises more, fresher, cleaner, new, more beautiful. There's more passionate things that He's got planned for us right now than we can ever possibly imagine. That alone is exciting. Not only are we beautifully formed, and we're valuable, and we've got a purpose and a plan, but He's got a fantastic idea of how this is all going to play out. It's not that the, it's not that the best is just yet to come. It's actually that something new that's never been seen before is going to happen. If we look at it that way, that's exciting. It's the start. And I think COVID is preparing us. Things have shifted. Things have, have, have gone different. There are different ways of doing things. It's almost like COVID has been the calm before the storm. Something is brewing. There is something around the corner. It's that, it's that just before the start that I was talking about, just before presenting a speech that goes incredibly well. It's the breath and the exhale of a runner that starts his race. It's that, that's that mm, just before. It's the closed eyes before somebody has a leap of faith to do something they've never done before. It's the last application of lipstick, ladies, which is massively important, before you go online and you actually have to do a recording. It's that, it's that mm, before the start. It's that last push before giving birth to a child that's starting a new life. It's that last hug that a dad gives his daughter before sending him off to start her new life with her husband. It's that just before we start doing it. And what is that? That's our thinking. That's the decision that we need to make to start doing what God's called us to do. Let's make that decision. And connecting with Jesus is where that starts happens because that's when we start to actually understand who we are. That's when we start to realize that we are completely and utterly loved by him. That's when we start to really grasp the concept of being precious and being valuable and having a purpose and knowing what's coming next because God has already planned it all before us. We don't have to know every detail. We just need to know it's going to be amazing. We just need to know and understand that he restores, he shapes, he makes us whole. All we need is him. Let's start with us. We start with him and he puts it all together. But we do need to respond. We need to start. We need to actually act and get that "Mm," before the start going. We need to make that decision happen. So let's start getting involved in serving. So how do we start? What do we start with in serving? We actually go and sign up. Let's start being generous. What do we do and what do we start with by being generous? We decide what we're going to give even before we arrive. Let's start investing in our spiritual life. In other words, let's plan to read. Let's plan to worship. Let's plan to spend time in His presence. Let's start to improve in our marriages. What does that mean we need to start doing? Decide and choose to love Him despite Himself. I know it's hard, and it is a decision, and it's something we need to act on, but let's not forget they're doing the same with us. In our imperfections, 
They're choosing and deciding to love us despite ourselves. Let's do the same to improve our marriage. Let's start making good decisions by first getting wise counsel. How do we start? We start by getting wise counsel. Let's start getting fit and looking after our bodies. How do we start? We start first by looking our uh, looking up where's our closest gym. Where are we going to start walking around? Let's sign up. Let's get going and look after our bodies. Let's start studying, training, and upskilling. Where do we start? Research it. What does your company need from you? Is there something we can upskill yourself on to be better at the job that you already have? Let's not wait. Let's not hold back. You know, today is the first day of the rest of our life. How amazing is that? We get a fresh start every single day. Let's start bringing awareness to the things that we might never have thought about before. Let's bring awareness to the fact that we are us. We are the us's that God started with. We're that valuable. We're that precious. Let's bring awareness to the fact that Jesus helps us get there, that he is all we need. Let's bring awareness to the fact that there are people around us. How can we impact them? How do we make disciples who make disciples? Let's start with the relationship with God and let's continue to make disciples who make disciples. You know what? It's, it's really just knowing that the us are the big idea. We are the big idea. We're it. We're everything that he planned. We are the main thing, the main part of this movie. And if we are the main deal and we are it, we are what he started with, then how can we think of ourselves any less than being right, perfectly positioned to start doing whatever it is that he's asking us to do? We have what it takes. We've got what we need. Let's believe it. Let's believe that what he's given us is enough. And so number two, you didn't think there would be another t number two. <laughs> we have a number two, but only a number two. <laughs> One and two. Number two, let's get ready. Let's not be left behind. Let's not be unprepared. Let's not wait for something to happen. Let's get ready, get going. Believe the stuff that God tells us about ourselves. Let's really, really dig into his word and grasp it. Get a revelation of who we actually are. You know, there's a new wave of lives turning. If you look at children these days, younger people are hearing from God. Children, young kids are, are already having such great faith about things that we, we don't even we think I'm crazy and weird and just like out there. Yet they know it's possible. They're thinking it's possible. Why? Because they're connecting with God at a such, such a younger age. Let's in, encourage the youth. Let's encourage people at a time such as this. God is doing miraculous things in the most unlikely places, in the most, with the most unlikely people, and shifting mindsets, changing norms, breaking barriers, breaking chains. He's doing all kinds of things fixing disabilities, all because we are ready to do what it takes, all because we know and we can believe that we've got something to start. We can go and actually make disciples who make disciples. We can and we must build our relationship with Jesus. That's what we were designed to do. We can see it already in the way that uh, COVID has shifted the way that, that we shop. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I go to the shops, there's nobody there. <laughs> in a way, it's fantastic because it's quiet. <laughs> But in another way, everyone is shopping online. There is so many different ways of doing things. The something new and the starting to do things differently has already begun. God has already begun doing something different. Youth are dreaming dreams that we don't even know about. Let's look after our children. You know, if I think of, of Elon Musk. He's younger than me. <laughs> so so I'm, sure, I'm sure he's younger than me. <laughs> and that's why I think of him as a youth. <laughs> Now, if you think of him, if you just think of the way this man thinks, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for Elon Musk. He lives in a world where it can be done. It will be done. And if it doesn't work the first time, well, we'll just do it another thousand times until it actually does happen and it does continue. Let's have that same mindset. If somebody, if, if we are Christ followers, how much more should we believe that we can do those kinds of things? How much more can we actually do? Because we've got Jesus. We've got the Holy Spirit. We're equipped. We've got everything we need to go and do amazing things. So it's not just exciting, but it's a mandate for us who lives in a time such as this. It's a mandate for people who have given our life to Jesus and said, come on, use me, pick me. I'll start with you. Let's start together. Let's do something new and let's continue to make a difference in this planet. On what, in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, it says, no mind has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. 
Let's believe that. We just need to love God. We just need to develop a relationship with Him. Where does it start? It starts with us. It starts with us saying, yes, I want to have a relationship with you. Yes, let's do something amazing. Yes, let's start going out and making disciples who make disciples. It's literally begun, and it is super excited, exciting. So let's start. Let's start with that thing that He might have already told you He wants you to do specifically. Let's start. Let's get it going. We've done the mm before the start. Now we can start and get the action going. Let's start believing that we're not a mistake. Let's start believing and knowing without a shadow of a doubt that we are loved by God, that we are His princesses, that we are royalty, that we are daughters of the Almighty King. Let's start our life with a fresh revelation, knowing that actually it can be done. Let's start a life with a full life of purpose. Not patches of purpose, but knowing that we can have a life fulfilled because of our purpose. So what's the plan? The plan is to develop a relationship with Jesus. The plan is to go out and make disciples who make disciples. And where do we start? We start with us. We start with us because God started with us. And if we start with us, we're starting with Him because He is the one who's given us everything that we need. So let's start that relationship with us. And He shows us how. He gives us all the tools that we need. He gives us all the things that we need. He's given us the word that we can read. We regurgitate that. We can meditate on that. We can really get into having an incredible relationship with Him. Can you imagine a life completely and utterly convinced and, and um, confident knowing that God is our Father, knowing that we are loved by Him, being confident enough that, that we've been perfectly, intimately, with such detail and such value, being formed by Him, when we get a revelation of that, nothing is impossible. Can you imagine the life we could live if we knew nothing was impossible? We, we, if, we, if we just thought, well, you know, the world's your oyster. What, what is it that we're going to go out and do? Let's go out and do that. Because all we need to be doing is trusting Him and He can do it with us. What would happen if we actually really believed that we're not a mistake? And we really believed that it didn't just happen, but that everything about who we are was perfectly and utterly amazingly formed. Wouldn't that be incredible? And so let's just pray. I want to just take this moment to spend a little bit of time chatting to God. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for everything you are. We thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you for creating us the way you have. Father, I pray for every single woman here who feels that maybe they, they walked in here thinking they, they have been created a mistake. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to them right now. Speak to them where they're at, Father. Let your presence make them whole. Let, them, let your presence fill them in such a way that it can only be from you. Lord, I pray that every single woman will feel your love, will know that your presence is here, that you created us, that you formed us immaculately, perfectly, the way that we were meant to be. And that you started with us. You started forming us. You started with us. You created us because you wanted to have a relationship with us. And so perhaps you came this evening and you don't have this relationship with Jesus. You don't have a relationship or, or understand who God is. You don't understand that Jesus could love us so much that he actually wants to continuously have a relationship with us. It's no mistake that you are here tonight. Jesus is standing with his arms open wide saying, come, come to me, receive me, respond to me. All I want to do is be part of your life. And he shows us how to do that. He says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. And he who opens the door and invites me in, I will dine with him and he with me. It's an invitation for him to come into your life. Not to make everything perfect, but to say that he will be there with you through every trial, through every challenge that you might face. He also shows us that he is the son of God. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. So all we need to do is accept Him. All we need to do is start and respond and act and say, yes, I do want you to be part of my life. I want you to come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. We need to understand that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died on the cross, and three days later, He rose again and is standing on the right hand of God. And that's what allows us to have an intimate relationship with God because of what Jesus did for us. And so in every way, 
every person in this room who might not have a relationship with Jesus. This is your moment. This is your chance to respond to Him, to start your relationship with Him, to start the journey of life with Jesus in your life. And so I don't want to embarrass you. I don't want to make you come to the front or do anything wild and strange, but I would love the opportunity to pray for you. And so I'm going to count to three. And if you'd like to make that decision tonight, if you want to start that relationship with Jesus tonight, maybe maybe you're a second bunch of people that have had a relationship with Jesus before, but your relationship with Him is not exactly where it should be. And you know that this is now another opportunity that you can say yes to Jesus. If you're one of those two people, as I count to three, won't you just raise your hand so that I can see who it is that I'm praying for? just want to commit you to Jesus. It would be an absolute privilege for me to be able to pray for you. And so I'm going to count to three. Just raise your hand as soon as I do. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see that hand at the back. Thank you. Thank you. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Hands going up everywhere. That's wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. I see your hand as well. Nice and high. Let me just see that one more time. Everybody, thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to make that decision? Anybody who's who's got those butterflies in your stomach, you know you need to respond, you know you need to do something. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. I did this years ago. There you go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And it was the best decision I made. This cannot be the worst decision. It is the best decision that you can make. You can put your hands down if you've raised your hands. Thank you. Wonderful. God is doing some amazing work here tonight. Come church, everybody who raised your hand specifically, repeat after me as we prayed. Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving all my sins. Thank you that I get to start a new life with you. Thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for me. Thank you for forming me the way that you have. And I'm excited for the journey that we're about to start. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this service. We truly hope that it added value, that it inspired and encouraged you. And if you just made a decision to follow Jesus, we want to celebrate with you as well as help you understand that very decision. We'd also like to point you to your very next step, Fast Forward. This will help you understand the gifts and talents that God has given you as well as the purpose of why God has created you. So if you'd like to be a part of Fast Forward, send us a WhatsApp. 082-736-9668 and we'd love to help you on your journey. We look forward to seeing you next time.